to welcome everybody. The people are starting, uh, you know, just still coming in, but we're going to get this started. It is the last uh, last presentation we've got in this room, actually, currently too. So uh, today we have how many? Can I get a uh, show of hands on small business owners out there? Sales representatives. Your you know your day as a business owner or as a sales representative is quite challenging. You've got two or three crews out there, uh, and, and you know obviously the uh, without a doubt something goes bump in the night. Something goes bump in the night. You just got a couple of crews. Kevin Down since the early 30s started with the one man crew and now is 150. Imagine running that organization. Well, we're about to hear a little bit about that today. So, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Down. Yeah, it's on your shirt. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Kevin Down, Down Street Service. Uh, I'm from Fort Moore, New Jersey, all the way up north. I want to thank Jason Bond, Joe Wright, New Jersey chapter of the ISA, to, uh, to invite me here to speak to you today. Uh, I'm not a CTE. Uh, I'm not a college, college graduate. I barely got out of high school. Uh, but uh, I came from hard knocks. I learned the hard way. So uh, basically, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about, about my story. And hopefully, at the end of the day, I'm hoping that someone here, or many of you here, I'll be able to benefit you with growing your company and how it's done. As you can tell, I'm extremely nervous. Never did this before. And I'm not looking forward to doing it again. <laughs> So basically, is a, basically a sharing the story of 40 years. I have a, a, a basic principles in the tree business are very similar to any other business. They're just principles. Uh, they work for me, for our company, they work for me. But the amount of companies that are out there, you really have to pick and choose what works for you. So what necessarily works for us will not necessarily work for you, but hopefully we'll be able to educate you on some of the things some of the educational things and some of the problems that we've had in growing over the past 40 years. Um, standard steps, it's very simple. It's no different than cutting a tree down than it is to running a business. You just gotta think about what you're doing and how you wanna do it. Uh, this is really the reason why I'm here today. Uh, 40 years in business, <clears throat> uh, we have 150 employees. I have 250 trucks, cranes, chippers, and all types of construction equipment. Uh, but that's not how it started. Started out here. Uh, if you can pick me out, if you can pick me out, uh, I'll buy the first round tonight, the bar. Uh, if it helps you, I'm on the right hand side, kneeling down, a mustache, and if you couldn't believe it, I have a 28 inch waist. I was 21 years of age, making $11,000 a year. A police officer, uh, it was my passion at the time. I enjoyed working outdoors. I enjoyed helping people. But making eleven thousand dollars a year needed extra money, so I started doing construction projects on the side. Led to my first tree job. Um, and, and, and history after that. But basically, for seven years, I worked forty hours doing tree work and forty hours in police car. I worked both days. I worked uh, day during the day. Uh, I worked during the day doing tree work, and then uh, the police job uh, from 3 to 11, 11 to 7. Seven years, two jobs, just too much. Uh, I, had, I had some choices to make. So I had the police department, the tree business, or my wife Amy. Amy doesn't think I made the right choice. <laughs> but basically, is, uh, uh, a lot of my friends that run a police department, good friends are mine today, you know, thought I was crazy for leaving the police department. Police job, you know, the pension, guaranteed pay, guaranteed everything, the police job. Look at the money they're making today. 
right? But uh, I wanted, I, was, I had a vision that I wanted to do what I, I wanted to do. I had a passion to do tree work, and I, uh, I went after it. Tremendous amount of respect for the people in this room. Uh, hard work, very dangerous, looks easy. We make it look easy from start to finish. You gotta hustle for a sale, schedule the work, perform the work, and then get paid. A lot to keep up with. You have employees, equipment, day-to-day -day operation. It can definitely be overwhelming. 40 years in the industry has definitely improved. Uh, stricter safety rules, training, and equipment. <laughs> my goal here is to share my story. Uh, offer some guidance, experience, good or bad, and have a few laughs about the good old days. This is how we started. Um, now there's a picture to your left up here at the house. Uh, it was a, or a, a three uh, F F three fifty pickup trucks. Uh, the chipper in the back was called a Minson Minson Merrill, or a Whisker Chipper, I should say. Um, I made it. Uh, that it was AKA known as the Chuck and Duck. Um, it, was, it, it whipped it, it whipped you so bad it took the shirt right off your back. You know, I think now we have so many cranes out in the industry. I, I started off with a sixty five ton crane that I rented. Uh, the picture up here, uh, the pickup truck that had my name on it, was the, was the first pickup truck I bought brand new in 1979. The color is dark jade green, and that's our color today. The truck in the middle, I'm running it. Uh, we were doing an airport job up in New York, and that truck is still in service today, truck number 26. Uh, but first, my, these are my first babies. Uh, I did start off with a McCullough chainsaw and a model pickup truck. I, Sold my first quarter of firewood out of my mom's station wagon. Uh, but basically, is today we have uh, we have three different companies. Down Street Service is the meat and potato, my first passion. Uh, DTS Trucking, we uh, we we remanufacture, re mulch, topsoil, recycle, and we service the containers. Down Forest Trucks, Down Forest Trucks is a mobile oil company. And it does today's day we do green roofs. Um, you know, basically as we bought the we went into the mold business just because of the high material we, we generated generated every year, every day. We just we're choking on it. So we said, well let's go out and do this. We made the investment into those. And today, those, those trucks there today, uh, we strictly just do green roofs. All right. We uh, we we go from Boston to Florida, uh, Miami. Uh, we've done the Javits Center, we did uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, and just this summer we did uh, the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. It took us 10 days to put the, the landscape patio in between the two houses. We put the uh, material in it, we blew the material in, into, into the planters. This was gradual. You know, 40 years is 40 years. You can't believe it, right? It's gradual. We grew with, our, we grew with the employees, we grew with our, our equipment. Uh, we grew basically on our customers' needs. So a customer has said, listen, I need you to do this, this, and this, and this, you know, I had a problem saying no. So I just did it. Wasn't overnight, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of reinvestment. Uh, now I'm gonna tell you how we get it started, got here. I basically broke it down for this presentation today. We have employees, customers, relationship, and equipment, safety. Employees. A whole ball game. Uh, employees, you can be successful or you can be failures. We grew with great employees. My goal here to tell you is you gotta surround, your, surround yourself with good people. You're not gonna do it without good people. I have employees, my average employee out of the 150 are there 10 years, average. I have employees there 30 and 40 years. Mark Rie Grossa, uh, 39 years here. Uh, actually, he was my first full-time employee when I was in the police department. So I used to do it part-time, he worked for me full-time. So, uh, but you got to surround yourself with the best of the best. I know it's easy, in this day and age, this economy, this world, it's easier said than done. How do you keep it? Employees, you got to keep them year-round. I mean, there's no, uh, I don't know any other way to do it, but you got to keep them interested in order to keep 
a year from now, you know, an employee just like yourself by mortgage, rent, insurance, car payments, groceries, you know, they, they as much as you need up, as, as much as you need them, they need you, right? And you gotta provide them. Even if work is slow, you just gotta find a way to find work for them to keep them busy. You have to meet not only your expenses, but their expenses. Supply year round work, steady paycheck. Imperative. When it's slow, you need to keep busy. I don't, I don't know, you just gotta be creative. You, uh, there's a, you know, you gotta think out the box. Um, you gotta branch out, other areas. We do winter work, we really press our sales staff to start in probably August, September, selling winter work. So you have a tree in the backyard, you have a, you have a tree in the backyard that um, a good customer of yours, it doesn't need to be done today, right? Uh, so you can usually sell it to them. Let's say hypothetically it's a $1,500 tree, just say we'll do it in the winter time and get it, you know, do it for $1,000 or $1,200, you know, you don't, you don't come down that way, you do $1,200. You can upsell it and downsell. But uh, we do firewood. I don't recommend it, but it's a necessary evil. We do snow plowing. I don't recommend it. It's blood money. Right? Municipal contracts. You got to go after municipal contracts? You should try. Go ahead, try something new. If you haven't done it, try it. Training. We do all, all our training uh, between January and March. We, do, uh, we bring a company in from Ohio. We do our first aid, we do our CPR. Everybody in the company goes through training and that's all done in the winter time. And, and owners, owners in the room, uh, you gotta anticipate slowdowns, plan ahead, backlogs, flexibility. You gotta be flexible, right? In anything you do today, take advantage of opportunities. So this is a little crazy, but uh, in 2010, on December 30th, the Bronx, Bronx, New York, Got 30 inches of snow. On that Thursday, this is a Sunday night. That Thursday, there was the first pinstripe game against Kansas and uh, Syracuse. So the, a, a very good customer of ours asked me, said, "Listen, the next day wants to hire us to do take all the snow all around the stadium, in front of the street, sidewalks, curbs, and everything like that." All right, so we went in there Monday, did it all. They were very impressed with it. They said, "Listen, we have another challenge. We went to the stadium, all right? So we went from the fourth deck to the third deck to." The the second and the first, the field and out the stadium. I called every goddamn landscaper, every tree guy I ever knew, right? And invited them to work. We paid them 20 bucks an hour. We worked 12 out, we worked for 12 hour shifts, and we got it all done before the, uh, before the game. It was pretty impressive. Uh, I didn't honestly think that was gonna get it done, but we did it. And uh, you just had to push, 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 push. Uh, it worked out really well. Uh, we've been invited back. We were invited to the game, but we were all too tired. <laughs> been doing, you know. uh, but it was a challenge and we look for it. I'm not saying this is a, this is a, at the highest level, but, and, but if you think about it and work on it and, and talk about it, uh, you could get it done. Be aggressive. Right? You gotta, work is slow, knock on the door. Call up some people, check, go through all your old estimates, go through them, call them, drive by, see if the work is done. You, you, gotta, you gotta go get it. Uh, don't wait for the phone to ring. Uh, get out there and get these guys work. Keep busy. If you keep busy in the off season, you'll make a lot more money during the season. Other ways to keep your employees and their benefits. We offer, uh, we offer health benefits. We pay 60% of the health benefits for a complete family. Right? We, we can do a 401k with matching funds. We can pay time off, vacation, sick time, personal, personal time, and holidays. I'm not here drumming up looking for employees. I'm just telling you this is what we do. <laughs> Other benefits, you know, for example, a tree guy down the street is going to offer, um, you know, $1,000 and you're only going to offer eight. But if you give benefits, time off, vacation, you know, 401k, these type of things go a long way. When we first started off and everybody was in their 20s and 30s, nobody gave a shit about, excuse me, nobody cared about, uh, nobody cared about benefits. All they wanted was the cash. Yeah, I want a bunch of you know, trees. telling you right now, now, now that their families are respected, they have kids, everybody wants benefits. What, do you, what can you do for them? <coughs> Example, COVID. Everybody, well, most of the owners here go, well, did very well with PPP money. You know, went to the employees, bills, and everything like that. But really, basically, the government said you had two weeks to pay your employees. But 
let's say hypothetically the employee's daughter or son or wife or was, was sick and had COVID, uh, you know, we basically didn't be paid. You just try to do the right thing, try to help them out. You gotta meet your employee's concerns. Other ways to keep your employees is by motivating. Motivating employees to work hard. Basically, my job here is to uh, to work with my work with my employees, ask them to work hard, do the right job, to be professional, do a clean job, safe job, and get them home. You gotta, they gotta have to do that all the first time when you make money. You gotta recognize recognition of Bill's uh, motivation. Recognize, reward the best, and the company, uh, for example, the company tickets. Uh, Richie is our head mechanic. Basically, we rewarded him. We made a company, uh, employee of the year. Uh, he thought he was just getting a certificate. We ended up again, you know, we gave him a check with him. He was really impressed with it. Mark, Mark Van Grossman, he's here for uh, 39 years. We recognized him. We also recognized uh, employees that had the cleanest trucks. The, mo uh, the most compliments. And so in other words, uh, you know, a crew that went out and worked in residential properties received emails, thank you cards, nice, nice notes on the invoice when they paid it. Um, you know, we, we recognized them in front of the whole company, and, and they they also got certificates and some money. Safe, the safest crew. You know, today it's hard to do that, but it's the safest crew, safest driver, the most productive crew, all got rewarded. They're all simple things. You just think about it, they're all, if you recognize the employee, uh, it goes a long way. There's a lot of inexpensive ways you can do that. You can buy lunch, you can buy coffee. Uh, we do, we try to do annual Christmas parties. We do, uh, during COVID, we, did, we, didn't do, uh, we didn't do picnics, but we did movie night. Uh, Boys and Girls Club at Hartford. We, they have crews going around New York City for four hours. Uh, we invited the, uh, the employee and their spouse. It goes a long way. We've done fishing trips with just the employees. Uh, that's challenging. Uh, you put guys on a boat with beer. Uh, we've, we've never been invited back to the same boat. <laughs> that's challenging. Right. Uh, I, I try to encourage motivation. With either uh, calls or texts, how's it going, how's the job going. If I had to go around and look at all the jobs that we're doing, I'd never get anything done. So I leave the responsibility up to the foreman, the, the, the crew supervisor, to get it done. You know, uh, if there's a problem, I'll be I'll be there available for them, whatever they need. Um, you, gotta, you know, basically it is, uh, for example, you know, the family is hurting. We we give them some additional money for food. Uh, someone that had some surgery, a family member had surgery, we give them flowers, the edible baskets. Uh, we show them that we care. Um, you know, let them know they're out there. I'm, um, I, I'm a workaholic. Workaholic. Um, I'm in at five in the morning uh, to get the ball rolling. Our sales team is in at six, and the crews start coming in at seven. Our uh, DTS, the, the trucks, start rolling at, at six, and down as far as five, they're usually on the road by five. But it starts early and it ends late. Uh, they say my help doesn't help. But I think, you know, I try to, I try to add to it. You know, I, the guys pull out sick, we move the crews around, make things happen. This job is can't get there. We gotta do this one, then you know, permit it. There's a lot of multiples today in the work. It's a challenge. I'm personally reachable 24 seven. I, I, I always have an open door policy. I have one-to-one -one meetings with the employees if necessary, but we do monthly meetings with the foreman, salespeople, and the office staff. Lastly, uh, we offer uh, opportunities to train in advance. Uh, shows you that the well-being and the growth of the employee, we invest in the employee, regards to CDL. Uh, we'll help an employee get a CDL because they're paying the has to get today. We'll pay for the schooling, we'll, give them a, we'll encourage them, and we'll give them a bonus if they pass it the first time. Uh, you've got to pay them more once they have the CDL. These are all things that help. Uh, crane licenses. We didn't have crane licenses in the tree business. You know, now we have uh, six crane operators that have uh, all license. We paid for it. We encouraged them. We gave them the time off to get it, and they did it. So now we have six six certified crane operators. Uh, all these steps, you keep them in, you know, you keep the employee in mind. Uh, 
they'll do, they'll do a great job for you. And uh, hire within your company. And our company grew over 40 years, so we had the opportunity to uh, have, a, have an employee that started from nothing to being something. And I, I encourage that all the time with the employees. Uh, we have an employee, Jeff. Uh, Jeff was hired uh, as his parents were a very good customer of ours. They had a, they said they had a son that was a pain in the ass and needed a job in the summer. We took him on, we hired him. Uh, he went through school, he changed his college degree. Uh, he's with us 25 years now and he runs down as far as far as. right here. <laughs> <laughs> you need his autograph, he's in the back. <laughs> but he, you know, here's he a guy, here's he a guy that started with nothing. But you know, I molded him, I taught him. It, it takes time, you know what I mean? It takes time, you gotta be invested. So I mean, today with no, with limits of skilled employees, you got to work within the people that you have. You know, uh, he, Jeff now runs 26 trucks, and again, we're from, we go from Boston to Florida. Uh, jo Josh Maskinis, Josh Maskinis is not in the room, right? Uh, he started off at an early age. He was a groundman. From a groundman, he went to a climber. But he, was, he was like 6'2", so he's tough in the tree. Every time he got in the tree, he got stuck. <laughs> uh, so we did with made a form. And then today, today, after 21 years, 21 years, he's our number one crane operator, and he's in charge of all our cranes. Inspections, you know, he's involved in the purchasing of them. You know, we keep him really involved. Now, Josh has a son that's 16 years old, and I'm telling you right now, he's following his dad's footsteps, and he'll be, you know, he'll, when he gets 18, he'll be with us. Augustine, Augustine, uh, Augustine, Augustine is with me 22 years. Uh, he came over, over the border for the American dream. Uh, he started off working with the stunt grinding crew, and he never left. So today, he, he runs the stunt grinding crew. We have four or five machines, four or five guys, and he runs it. Danny Borges. Danny Borges, 28 years of service. It took me two years to teach him how to use a rake. <laughs> two years. And today, today he runs our biggest recycling center, most profitable. You're talking about excavators, bulldozers, loaders, tough, top soil machines, and tuck grinders. Right, uh, but 28 years, and both of those employees, and many more of them, uh, both have homes here. Uh, you know, they both purchased homes in the last, you know, last 10 years. So they do. They came from Mexico, worked hard, uh, decided to stay, build a family here. And again, uh, Augustine's son is in here in summer jobs, and Danny's son, uh, he had him at the recycling center for many summer jobs, summer years. Uh, to discourage him from doing this. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, Danny's son is now an engineer. So uh, I'm, proud, I'm proud of him that he was able to put himself through college and got it done. Employees, I don't have to tell anybody in this room, they're challenging, but the most important. Uh, you gotta give them a home, uh, you gotta look at it. They spend more time with you than you spend with, than they spend with their family. You know, you, you, you have to think about it, all right? It's all about respect. Those steps, you show them respect. Respect equals retention. Like an employee, customer. Challenge. Important, you need to start a rapport with your customers. You're not looking for the first hit, you're looking for multiple hits. So, you know, a customer in the tree business, you may have a customer for 20 years and only service them five, five times. For if you have them as an IPM program, and you may be service them eight times during a year. You have, you have a reward with them. Um, it, it's, a, it's essential. Uh, customers, like I said, customers aren't year to year. Uh, uh, you gotta communicate with them. We do these for our, one, our top 100 customers of the year, uh, residential wise, we give them a, a basket. Basket costs anywhere between 25 and 50 bucks. And before you know it, they're so appreciative of it, they're gonna give you, I'm telling you right now, they're gonna give you a $2,500 to a $5,000 job. And you tell them you like to do it in the winter. <laughs> wow. Right. 1989, four years ago, uh, I still work for the Carsons. Okay. I work with them, I work with them and their five kids. They won't live in the area. Um, I bring an example here. Um, I guess it was kind of 30, 35 years ago. I was doing it on, doing it on the side. I cut myself with a chainsaw in the backyard of a house in Allendale. 
I knocked on the door, I told them, you know, I had a t-shirt, my t-shirt wrapped around my leg and was bleeding like a pig. Right. I told him, I said, I'm going to be back, I'm going to go to the hospital and get stowed up and everything. He said, no, I'm a doctor, come inside. He sewed me up at the kitchen table, right. 20 minutes later, 50, I mean, a half hour later, all right, put me back to work. <laughs> you, uh, you cannot buy word, you can't buy mouth, uh, mouth, word, word of mouth advertising. Neighbors see you working next door, family sees you. Uh, a customer, you have to leave a customer happy. Okay? So let's say hypothetically you may not be making the money you are. At the end of the day, you just have to make them make it work because the opportunity to work them again is down the road. Good reviews spread quickly, bad reviews burn you to the ground. So uh, something goes sideways, just own up to it, admit it, fix it, resolve it. For example, I don't know if anybody knows it. But uh, in, the, in the mulch business, when you have mulch that sits or cooks too long or not cooked enough, uh, it burns and it's like, it's, it's like hot, hot mulch. Never seen anything like it. So we had to deliver it 25 yards to a house in Saddle River and half, the average house in Saddle River is a million bucks, if not more. So we delivered it, the lady uh, called me like the next day later, she had her, you know, some lands, her landscape to spread it. We wiped out all her perennials, all the, uh, all the annuals, and we left one foot ring around the whole landscape area. All right, and the grass was yellow. She read me like the riot act. So we went there, we, we cleaned it all up, we took care of it, replaced the flowers, did everything, replaced the mulch, we put bad hemlock down, hemlock mulch from, uh, I don't know, Walmart, and, you know, we bought it. Uh, but we serviced her. We, we, we made her feel that uh, we cared. Uh, so that customer, uh, oh, okay. Sorry. So since then, we've done approximately fifty thousand dollars of work for that customer, and I think that happened like you know six, seven years ago. It took her a year to get over us, and she didn't order mulch from that the next year. But she was impressed how how much we cared, and we went back and did the right thing. We did we did the right thing. That's all that matters, right? But you know she appreciated our effort, and uh, she's got the best fruit and trees and lawn ever. All right, going back to customers. Our customers today are educated, now more than ever. So your sales team has to be educated, all right? Someone, all right, if not, someone else is gonna have a solution. So like today we have, you know, lantern fly, ash borer, leaf mite, and Dutch elm disease. You know, these people know about it. So I mean, if you don't have the answer, you gotta find the answer and give them the right answer. Uh, in my early days of potentially meeting customers, I didn't want to be them. I classified them as drive-by estimates. So I drove past their house, looked at the work, right? Sometimes on a midnight shift with a flashlight, looked at it, and then I put and raced back to put the estimate in the mailbox. Right? Uh, so over the last 15 years, we've decided, you know, like it's time. We make an appointment with the customer, we meet the customer, we talk to the customer, we build a relationship with the customer. And, and by you doing that, and you selling what you can do, your closing ratio, will, instead of 10%, will be at 40 or 50%. Pricing. Uh, inexpensive, I like that word, huh? <laughs> that was my first business card, inexpensive. Pricing is, in this business, is, is the first thing. Uh, but you can sell yourself, you can tell them that why you're going to be more money than the guy that, that got the other you got the other estimate from? You're going to tell him you're going to do more. You're going to give him more. You're going to, you know, your yard's going to look, you know, priceless. I mean, after it's over, you know, you're just going to give them more, and they they feel they're getting more of a value. The more more of a tendency to, to pick you. I'm not saying you have to be high, and really, I don't want to be in the middle of a road. But price reflects value. But with regards to customers, we talked about work. Uh, what do you work? Like I told you before, um, if it's not a regular customer, I would recommend you get a deposit so they stop looking. If they know you, if they know you have their money, uh, and you tell them you're going to do it in between January and March, and they don't call you January first and ask you where you are, um, you know you'd be better off. Uh, you want to be, you want to advertise that you're pulling in short. Not only you have skilled crews, you have skilled equipment. You have, equipment today is very modern, and you have that. 
and equality is guaranteed. Re reputation of years of business goes a long way. First and the most, most one, most one. Well, that's great. Um, you want to talk about is that your employee in the, in the tree business? It's tough to keep clean, but you want to have a clean image. So you want to have your trucks clean. You want to have your employees as clean as they could be. You want to have a, a, a presentable a logo. And you know, basically, at the end of the day, uh, most customers don't know what a good cleaning job is. Uh, they really don't. You know, I would say 10% know. But they will know when they trip over a twig coming up the sidewalk or the driveway or to sort, sort us on their mailbox or in their car. So spend the extra 15 to 20 minutes cleaning the place up. And I don't know whoever invented the leaving mold, mold holes for stunt running. I mean, I've seen guys leave a five foot pile of uh, mulch on top of the stumps. What, what, what God's name is a woman going to do with that? <laughs> you, know, you know, 10 yards or 15 yards of mulch. What are you going to do? You got to take it away. Uh, you're talking about business. In business, um, you want to have a <laughs> relationship. No different than with your employees, your customers, and your business partners. You know, for example, your financial partners. Uh, financial partners are important. Uh, equipment suppliers are important. Organization and community development. I'm fortunate, very fortunate, to have a mentor in the early days, and I probably wouldn't be here without him. Uh, small tree service in Old Japan, New Jersey, Arrow Tree Service. The owner is uh, John Bertinelli and Billy Smith. Billy Smith, they're both CTEs, and they taught me tree etiquette. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was tree etiquette, but they taught me. Um, Paul Portsmore. Paul Portsmore, I don't know if you know him, but he was the owner of Sequoia Tree Service. In my day, he was a legend. Uh, I always wanted to say, if I could be like Paul and see what he does and how he ran his company, that's what I wanted. And I inspired to do that. Marty Gower. Marty Gower owned four gas stations in the area. I rode my bicycle there when I was 16. And he always told me, you gotta go to the extra yard with the customer. You know, so I mean, if a customer came in, you pumped their gas. Back in those days, he asked if you want to check your oil. Now you don't even know where to, how to open up the hood. Right? <laughs> but he always told you, grab the goddamn uh, squeegee and wash that window. Right? Wash the front window and then do the back it goes a long way. I mean, you, you know, when a customer knows you care about them and willing to go the extra yard, they're willing to go there. So Morning's gas stations were all higher than his competitors. But yet, you know, he did fantastic in business. Marty also told me another thing is you got to got time. Because he was the first one to fire me. Because I, I, I was late for work all the time. He fired me. Right? Police department. Police department was a, an education. How to treat people. I mean, you see a lot of things on TV today. That's 95% of the cops aren't doing what those, what you see on TV today. TV only told you all the bad things, all the good things. Cops in general are out there to care about you and want to help. You. All right. Police department told me how to solve problems. You, were, you know, a lot of problems you've only got a second or two to think about and or resolve. But you know, it taught me, it taught me how to resolve problems, and I, I think that to me that made me the person I am today. Uh, my recommendation is look for a mentor. Don't, uh, don't forget to give back. One of the reasons I'm here today. I needed this like I need a whole man. <laughs> Banks, lenders, necessary evil, credit lines, bonding. It's critical to your business. Uh, did you know that when you go for a, a loan and the bank, t <coughs> the bank tells you 7%, tell them, listen, the guy down the corner is giving me six and quarter. Try it. Even if you didn't get it, try it. Banks are always looking, they're out there as much as you are looking for good customers. So if you are a customer in good credit, good, good credit rating, pay your bills, responsible, they're willing to negotiate. So, you know, it's a, it, it's a mutual benefit to have a relationship with a banker. I started off with uh, Chase Manhattan Bank, Bank of America, uh, Wells Fargo, and now today we deal with Columbia Bank. Uh, Columbia Bank, I've had it for about 10 or 12 years. Uh, the gentleman who I had 10 or 12 years ago was just still, still the same salesman or same bank person. As he moves up the corporate ladder, he takes my phone calls. You know, he knows my needs. He understands what I'm trying to tell him what I need from him, regardless of a credit line. COVID came, 
And I, you know, I thought we were going to go bankrupt in the first two weeks. You know, uh, you know, I, he extended my credit line. He, he doubled my credit line. You know, I just had to go through the paces with him. But he understood our needs, and I was afraid with COVID we weren't going to be allowed to work. You know, and I wanted to keep the employees, wanted to keep payroll going. I, I had bills to pay. So I mean, very, very helpful. If you have a, a banker, the problem with the bigger banks is that guy that you, you, you talked to two years ago is not there again. He got he got a promotion. He went up there. You deal with this person. Now you got to start all over again. It's a it, it's like a merry-go-round. Strong equipment suppliers relationship. It's important unless you have you know ten trucks in this. A GMC, a Ford, a Chevy, an International, a Mac, whatever, and they're all painted different colors. This advice is not going to help you. All right, but you got to you got to do is uh, you got to stick with one one vendor. Right? Most of our vendors that we had, we've had for 25 years. Uh, Bolton Fuel, Bolton Fuel is a, a fuel company in uh, Malibu, New Jersey. Sandy told, called me up. The owner called me up and says, "Kevin, I'm out of fuel." I said, "I said, John, that's your problem. Figure it out." I said, I need fuel. We're, we're working. We got all kinds of storm drivers, all kinds of work, and you're here telling me I can't go to work because you can't give me fuel? It's not what relationship is about. You went to Pennsylvania, you got me fuel. I have fuel every day. Didn't, didn't stop working. Didn't have to worry about fuel. I mean, I, I had to send our pickup trucks to get gasoline for the saws to Pennsylvania, but it all worked. Gordon Ford. Gordon Ford was the tiniest little Ford dealership in Rockland County, New York. The owner lived in, in River Valley. Drove past my shop, gave me a business card, told me, he said, listen, I'm a little guy up the street. Maybe one day you need a truck, or maybe you need a part, maybe you need this, maybe that. It's, you know, we started a relationship for 25 years. And the guy got on a plane and went to Virginia to pick up a chip truck. Or he went to Ohio to get a chip truck. Or he went to go there and get me this. The guy just, you know, it's all about respect. He knew that he, he tried to keep me as happy as I could, and I did was I gave him all my business. Gordon Ford left, left, got, Picked up by a big, a bigger company, Rich Retired. Uh, my father found a company in Piedmont, Piedmont Truck Center. Uh, is in North Carolina. We bought a used truck from them, and they couldn't be the nicest. They delivered it, they did everything. So now, whatever trucks we support, they sell Ford and Western Store trucks. So whatever trucks we order from, they, they take care of all of it. We do it all the ordering online, everything, all the conversations over the phone or computer, and they deliver. So I mean, they're out there. If you if you're hustling and you pay your bills and be respectful, they'll do the same for you. There's other people that want your work and your money. Giant tire. The business that I have, I gotta have a hundred different tires. Right? So pay your bills. Guys, when I first met him, he was paying the ass. You know, he'd always open up at six in the morning. Said, I believe I close at two thirty. I have a flat tire in a truck, and I said, listen. Uh, how? I need the truck fixed. He said, well, that's good overtime. I said, I didn't ask you how much it would cost it. I just need that tire fixed. You know, because and so he went out and he filled up his inventory with at least two of those tires of every tire that I, I had in my fleet. Went out of his way. Didn't have to do that, but he wanted your business and, he, and I gave it. <coughs> or is it community involvement, organization? We don't advertise. Our advertisement is our equipment, right? I mean, there's a lot of things you can do on social media. I'm 65 years of age, and that's way beyond me, right? But we do, we go back to our roots. Um, we sponsor baseball teams. We do town day. We do parade floats. Uh, we do Arbor day. We do work day. We just, uh, you know, work day, we did the Brantford Park for the uh, ISA. Um, we've gone as far as um, Arlington National Cemetery for uh, TCIA. We did that 25 years ago. Most amazing thing I ever did. Uh, we do saluting, uh, saluting branches. It's all federal cemeteries throughout the country, and they put together tree company will go, or many tree companies will go to each cemetery throughout. The vets, you would not believe how many vets are in, even in a room or in a, our community or our customers. It goes a long way. Uh, we have a this uh, back here. We have a pink panther. This is our pink panther. We had an employee, uh, his wife had uh, breast cancer five years ago. We did it in October. That truck there is green and white. So is the trailer, green and white. We put a, a wrap around it. Pushed like $2,500. that has been on there for five or six years. And basically, we were going to take it off during October. But we got such a great review from customers that, you know, with everybody with cancer today, 
and, and their needs, they couldn't believe that we would care about them. And you know, we've gotten a lot of work from just people that have had it. Uh, but that, that, that went along with real, that went well. Veterans. Uh, that truck is white, and the trailer is, uh, is also white, and we did a, a wrap on that. I think the cost of that would be around $2,500. Uh, it goes a long way. You know, and that, those trucks, for example, go back to the those trucks are wanted all the time in every Memorial Day, Fourth of July, every kind of parade. We get calls, you know, every year for them. All right, Ridgewood. Everybody knows what a Ridgewood is. Ridgewood is probably uh, top ten Bergen County wealthiest uh, community. A lot of uh, lot, lot of people in Ridgewood. I think the residency is around 26,000 26, residents. Uh, Fifteen years ago. The village of Ridgewood eliminated their Christmas tree uh, out of their budget. I think they had budgeted like $25,000 to put up a Christmas tree and they were putting up you know, 40, 50, 60 footers, but they were doing it with town employees and it just wasn't going well. So they eliminated, they said they, they're going to compromise and put a 20 or 15 foot tree in park and let it grow. So the Chamber of Commerce came to me, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, who I didn't really know. My sister introduced me to him and he asked me, he says, uh, you know, we'd like, I'd like to know if you could do a Christmas tree for us. And I said, yeah, I could, you know, I, I have a hard time saying no. And I said, well, you know, I think we could do that. And uh, they said, well, this is our first one we ever did. So I said, what's your budget? He said, well, we got no budget. There's nothing. I said, you got to be kidding me. How do you expect me to do that for nothing? Thought about it. But basically, is we've done it for 15 years now. We, uh, we find the tree. Uh, we tie it up. We take it down. We transport it. Put it in this hole, light it, take it down, take the lights off of it, and uh, take the tree down. But Ridgewood, out of all our customers, is no, the residents, residency of Ridgewood is our number one customer. Nice. But you wouldn't believe how many people come to you and say, you guys do the Christmas tree. No matter how, you know, they, once, they, once they see us, get us involved, you know, they're a re repeat customer all the time. They constantly keeps on giving. My favorite topic, equipment, is we, easy ways to invest in the equipment. We sort it over to, we grew, we, we grew with our customer base. We can go out and buy 100 trucks of equipment and say, all right, now we're going to find work for it. Basically, we grew with our, our customer base as it, as it was needed. Uh, did I ever expect I'd be up here and telling you what the equipment we do have 40 years ago? I, I, I would never think it would ever happen. And it didn't happen overnight. Um, you know, for example, we. Uh, our, right there, our first train is a 1991, and if you think about rates that are ridiculous now, I paid, uh, whatever I paid for it, I think the interest rate was 17% back in 1991. We rented a crane from a couple different crane companies, and when we rented it for 20 or 30 40 times, we realized that if we don't have our own crane, we'd be able to do double the amount of work, 20 or 30 more jobs, so that's why we bought a crane. Um, it's just a rule of thumb, if you're spending a lot of money on rental, and you feel you can use it to purchase it, it's better than if you're paying your equipment than someone else's equipment. Bucket trucks, cranes, bucket trucks, shippers are still the workhorse. We reinvest in our, our equipment and we reinvest in our employees. It, and we, st we, started off, we started off with um, some special, a lot of specialty equipment, but we specialize in ugly jobs. We just try routine jobs anybody can do, the ugly jobs we specialize in, and the specialized equipment is a win-win. For example, you have a job that you're going to bid for, it's going to take you six hours and do it, you do it in three. Now you can do another job. Our employees, the employee is happy, all right, safer, and you're moving on to another job. Uh, my personal, recently, in the last two years, three years, we bought a Culpaker crane. Culpaker crane is, a, is definitely a game changer. It's definitely a game changer. Um, but the beauty of it, it has the ability of doing a lot of different things. It has a saw head on it. You can take the tree down if you have to. I don't, you know, it's a little slower if you put a guy up in a tree or a bucket truck next to him. Uh, the ability of a culpable crane, it doesn't necessarily have to, you don't need straps. It, it has a claw on the end of it, it grabs it, and has a saw in it if it needs to cut anything away from it. And it takes big pieces. Um, uh, rate for storm damage. You can take the employee right out of the wrist. You know, a tree on a house, take it right off the house, take it away. It's, it's uh, pretty impressive. Also, too, is a remote control. So if you have your crane, Set up in your front yard, your crane operator is of course running your crane. But a pelt is remote control, 
so that the crane operator can go in the back door and see exactly what he's doing. There's a, you know, there's, the communication is there, and it's definitely a game changer as far as storm damage. Spiders. Spiders have come a long way. We have we have three of we have three of them, two different types. Um, basically, is, uh, for, you're talking about the aging employee. You, you know, someone said this morning the, the employee's been running out of 30 years old, 35 years old. So now you do is you buy a spider and you put an employee in it, no different than a bucket truck. And you, you know, we have employees that are you know 50, 60, 70, not 70, 60 years old, 65, right? And the reason why we went spiders is that our guys broke their ass to take so many fences down to get in someone's backyard, hop out shrubs, and run over sidewalks to get the bucket truck in the backyard. It was a lot cheaper to get one of these things. Uh, these, these spiders here, they, I mean, they've come a long, long way. They go through a gate of 36 inches and go up 90 feet. It's an investment though, it's 150, 160, $170,000. But the employees, the, the tree climber that you need this talent to know how to take the tree down, how to do it safely, right, is not going home being worn out. You know, he's tired, but he's not deep. Okay. A bot. A bot is what we call a little green machine. It's probably the least expensive piece of equipment I own. Uh, it's excellent for re residential work. Uh, it has the ability to lift up 2,500 pounds. So that the tree, the logs on the right hand side, were in the backyard, fork it out, carry it out, and the log truck will pick it up on the street. Instead of you know using a log dolly, cut it smaller, time, time is money, and uh, you know basically you know it's great for. It has turf tires on it, and it articulates in the middle. It has 2,500. Uh, has the ability. If you, you can use dingoes, you can use bobcats. Problem is with that, they tear up residential. Good for commercial work. Good for you know road work, but you know uh, you're gonna have to put plywood down. So you're really not a time time saver. Specialty equipment. Uh, a company, uh, uh, that specialty equipment will help a company with productivity, employees to stress on their body, and customers uh, uh, damage. Um, I'm going to pause today, uh, and a real reason uh, I'm here is because of safety. Uh, 27 years ago, this week, I had an employee killed by electricity. Um, to, this, to this day, it's challenging. But it was a routine job. We went there, we set the crane in the front yard, we were doing a storm damage in the back yard. Everything was all done, wrapping it up, and the crane operator or the, or the climber saw that there was a storm damage still in the front yard in the street tree over the road. So what he did was, you know, instead of doing it the right way, he uh, swung over with the crane, uh, put the climber, so he grabbed the branch. He just, the broken branch was just broken hanging there. He grabbed it, and by him pulling it out of the tree, he pulled the top of the tree into the primaries. And since he was suspended on the crane, he became the current, and he was killed instantly. 28 years old, happened 27 years ago. So basically at the end of the day, when you go to a job and you look at the ugliest job, the hardest job, the most physical job, and you look at it and you say, you know, you think about how you're doing it. But the ones that are gonna hurt you or kill you are the routine jobs. The ones you say, I've done it for a hundred times. I've done it for a thousand times. This was a routine job. It didn't take more than 10 minutes. So, I realized 27 years ago, I did not have my guys trained safely. So what basically did is I took two guys, two of our foreman, sent them to a company called ACRT. It's just the name of a company, but it's an electric awareness company out of Ohio. We sent two guys out there, they brought back the information, and for the past 26 years, I've had instructors from ACRT come to our office and, uh, and teach us about electric awareness. Every one of my employees, 150 of them, have to go through electrical awareness. Have to. It's a five-day class, and then it's a reflector every year. But so we re basically ran out of people to train, and so I, you know, ten years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I opened up to all our competitors and tree guys in our in our industry. More than welcome. All of the municipalities they have tree companies, tree bucket trucks. They're all welcome to come. They, and we fill up. We get we get about now about 150, and it takes about five weeks to get it through. But we, you know, we have a great response. Great, I feel it's something that it was something I needed to do and give back, and it, it's gone over huge. We also uh, uh, let's see. We also offer CPR and, and, and first aid in our business. It, you know, chainsaw cuts, all kinds of injuries and stuff like that. The basic first aids 
you, you get the local uh, ambulance corps, the fire department. Um, there's a lot of online classes you can do first aid, but I, I recommend the person coming to you and, and giving it to you. Um, we joined in 1988, we joined the TCIA, it's another organization, the National Arbor Association. Uh, it's a national organization, it's very affordable. I think if, I think if we Google it on the way down here, it's 300 bucks, you can join it. Uh, there's a lot of courses online, but basically if you do no training, there's no excuse. There's really, there's, you, should have, you should train your employees. It's your responsibility as owners of companies. But TCIA gives tree climbing specialties, aerial lifts, uh, operations, rescue, ground operation, electrical awareness, arbor safety, and certified tree care plus more. It's very, very, very simple. Uh, okay, we have our annual mandatory company meeting. It's coming up in two weeks. And basically, we have all our employees come our Saturday starts at 6, 6 30 in the morning, goes 11 30, 12 o'clock. We have different people come in. You know, for example, uh, it's mandatory. The only one that's not, not there is my wife. All right, but basically, the local police department, I don't know if you're aware of it, they have goggles that can, uh, can you put yourself in a chair, put these type of goggles on, and stand up, and they'll tell you what reading you are. So, in order to be like a, a point one oh or a point oh four. You know, it's, it's, an, it's amazing what those goggles are doing because your CDL driver's license, the state police told us today that if you have a CDL driver's license, I'm almost positive you have a class D license, driver's license, uh, and you get arrested for drunk driving, it's an 08. But if you have a CDL driver's license, it turns into an 04, and you lose the license for up to a year. There's, and and there's, no, there's no way to get out of it. It's just the, the court recognizes it, that's it. And you're going to do it, and you lose a CDL driver for a year. Marijuana today is a problem. You know, uh, they, the state police went over that. Uh, it's important, but we have we have a, a, a AAA come in and do defensive driving. We have the ambulance corps come in and do uh, first aid, fire department. Uh, we try to do is uh, try to educate our employees. Um, if you look at uh, the industry itself has gotten a lot safer. This picture on the left hand side is myself up in a laundry and my brother Peter on a roof. We're doing snow damage in Washington Township. Uh, as you can tell, we had no hard hat, no chaps, no safety gear, no headphones, no nothing. Right? We had a chainsaw in the hand, we take the snow damage off a of garage. And my wife tells me I, I ignore her. But my favorite word is what? I can't hear shit. Right? And you can just gobble, you know, and no headphones. Uh, I think it's important for every employee to have the right safety gear that you can give them, issue, issue to them, enforce them, to wear, push them to wear it, bother them, pain in the ass, whatever. Everybody needs to go home safe. Da uh, all right. We have dash cams in the trucks. Uh, we have the dash cams because every goddamn term, TV commercial you see, every sign coming down here tells you about legal. You can get sued for, you know, slip and falls, accidents, and the lawyer's going to do it. We put them in here because they're, they're helpful. Uh, but we're not watching the employees, we're just watching what's happening in front of us. Go ahead, Bob. So if you look at the left hand corner, top left hand corner, one of our brand new trucks, mind its own business, going down Route 17 uh, and Ramsey, just mind its own business in the slow lane. <clears throat> and then uh, the car's going to come into the middle lane and cut him right off. And Sean is going to do his assist her in getting into the gas station at a rather quicker speed. <laughs> so not only did she cut us off, she was ran over two employees and almost knocked over the gas station. That would definitely have been on the news. But the first thing that she said to the police officer is that truck cut me off. <laughs> right? So we had it on our dash cam, but the gas station even had a better picture of it. So I think I think in time your insurance company is going to mandate it. Mandate. Right, you're going to have the extra hands. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons why we have cameras, because of lawsuits. Uh, 40, 40 years when we started with insurance, uh, our surcharges were more, more money than our insurance, uh, because we didn't, we didn't really give a crap about it. We, just, we, just, we were like the demo squad. Uh, but we learned, uh, we learned through, through our pocketbook Right, and that it's a, uh, our business is a huge risk, dangerous industry. Uh, shopping for, I don't know if you don't realize it, shopping for insurance is a myth. It's a myth, right? Uh, you can ask five agents, you're going to get one quote from one insurance company. That's it. 
I'm going to try to wrap up. We've gone the route of a captive insurance. You're going to hear about it, you know, uh, five years ago, six years ago. And you're, you're basically a self-insured company, and you work with a couple. Uh, it's a bigger group. Uh, we go to a marketplace with, uh, I believe in April, we go to a marketplace with $400 million in insurance premiums. You get big dividends, but you've you got skin in the game. You're going to, you're going to pay basically about the same, but uh, you're going to become a much safer company, and you're going to get much bigger dividends. You know, I mean, when I threw you through the numbers, um, you can start off with a, in a cap of $150,000. They'll cover your general liability, workers' comp, and automobile policy. Uh, it's coming, and you're going to see it. I have an insurance agent that tells you it's not going to work for you because they're not involved in it. That's the reason why a capital works. It, it eliminates the insurance agent. Uh, they, they encourage win-win. Um, so, I mean, in the industry, in the tree business, our capital, that we're in, uh, there's only three companies in it. I'm in New Jersey, and I have two in California. There's 40 other company, uh, 400 other companies throughout the country. You got Chris Dell, big payment company. He's in my captive. You got Jesco. He's in. Caterpillar's in. Uh, Weld and Quarry's in. What you're doing is you put everybody's money in it and go into a marketplace. Our insurance company is, um, is I can't think about it. All right, Public Works. I'm just make this really quick. Public Works certificate. If you're looking to do municipal work, you got to have a Public Works certificate. You can get it online. All right. The myth. The round wage. Everybody says, what's the round wage job? If you work in a community. You, day in, day out, work for this community, you have $50,000 of maintenance work to do for them. That's maintenance. But you work in the same community for ABC contractor, and he's doing, he's doing the paving, he's doing a new curb, sidewalks, drainage, whatever the case may be, that's a capital, capital improvement project. You have to pay your employees a prevailing wage rate. It's a lot harder, a lot higher rate. You've got to come up with certified payroll. You're subject to get audited by the labor department. And if that's the case, you get caught. I think big fines, and I think it's seven years. I had 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 experiences with OSHA. I'm not denying that. I had the fatality um, 27 years ago. I've been audited two or three times. OSHA not out there to put you out of business. I, I thought I was going to be out of business. They're not out there to put us out of business. They're there to work for you, work with you. They're there to make sure your employees safe. New Jersey uh, DO, the New Jersey Labor Department, the same way. They want to make sure their employees get paid. The right, the right rate. Collections. Have we talked about. Uh, are we going to do that? Right. So, lastly, collections. You know, you, did, you sold the job, you did the job. Uh, now you want to get paid. So, my, you know, you keep talking. You, I always tell you to work it out with the customer. Try to get the money uh, the right way. Lawyers are not going to help you. They're going to cost you. Small claims court. You're only going to get a half. So this is a, this is something I don't recommend. We used it 10 years ago, and it worked great. We took a guy who was $40,000, he bought $40,000 in mulch, he paid everything up $16,000. We took him to court, two years, we got a judgment and everything like that, and then we realized he don't own the company. His wife owns the company, or his mother owns the company. So my brother came up with a brilliant idea, and I don't recommend you to do this, it's just an idea. <laughs> we put a four by eight sign, a four by eight sign on, our, on all our tractor trailers and drove up and down the highway, and in less than two months, we received our money of $16,000. <laughs> and then also to it, he, he said he was going to get our lawyer. He wrote us a nasty letter that he was going to sue us for false advertisement. And stuff. And you got to mix up the name. His, you know, his name wasn't what it is. And he's not, his name is a con word. And, and he was a big guy, so we called him enormous. So whatever he knew he was, right? We put that up there, and we, uh, it says two years, he finally got paid. I don't recommend it, just pay a way to get money. All right, uh, still labor shortages, fuel costs and economy, fear of recession. Uh, we all know about uh, shortages of brown. There's plenty, of, there's plenty of, there's no shortage of brown people in labor. It's hard to get hired, hiring a good skill help. My recommendation is work within. You have the equipment, save them, get as much as you can out of them. Um, if your employees don't need you, you don't need that. You don't have an employee problem. All right. Um, See, fuel costs, stupid, stupid, all right? I, that's all I can tell you, is that we use two or three different fuel companies, fuel fuel companies, and we keep them honest every two weeks. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's here, it's gonna stay. Uh, we don't charge fuel surcharges only on our recycling and our 
our mold products and the DFD, the tree end of it, we try to put it in, in, into the business, into the price, but you gotta be, you gotta be hard, you gotta get, you know, you gotta work on it. Uh, you basically, you know, uh, when you get slow, you want to, you don't want to fire your crane operator because eventually you're gonna get, you're gonna get busy again. You know, recessions or slowdowns, you know, or you know, come around. Everything comes back back to it, and you'll be busy again. You don't want to hire. <coughs> you don't want to lose your key guys, especially your crane operator. Um, like I said that, uh, you gotta be creative, find work. You just, you know, be, think out of the box. Uh, my personal, you know, my personal opinion, you know, uh, uh, my personal opinion, we don't say no to anything. You know, if anybody calls me up and asks me a job, and anyone of my employees will tell you, anybody that knows me, we're willing to do anything, right? It may not be pretty, but we're, you know, we're we're going to keep everybody busy. That's my goal. We never say no. I uh, never forgot where I came from. Never, never forgot. Um, I was, uh, I lived a fire out of my mom's car when I was uh, 17 years old. I was a police officer, I sort of a chainsaw and a, a pickup truck. Uh, but through and through, I've met some of the best people in the tree business today. The best. And to be honest with you, I would, I, I would never, never thought I'd be where I am today. Uh, but I'm glad I'm here. And I feel I made the right decision. There's no better, I, I, have, I have just as much fun sitting down on a tree, a, a guy who climbs a tree and having a beer and pizza with him. Um, believe it or not, I used to climb trees. Used to. Now you need a crane to get me up. Okay, one. Uh, the most important in, in the picture is my family. Uh, my wife still works across the hall from me. She tries to keep me grounded, and she, of course, she keeps an eye on the money. Uh, my daughter Colleen is right here. Right. Uh, Colleen is uh, the first, second generation of damage tree service. Uh, she's worked for us for two years, and she's my first sales woman. Uh, and I'm a very lucky guy. Um, there's a lot of things, that, a lot of thing about the business itself is all about working hard. I don't think, I don't think hard work will kill you, right? But danger will, and, and routine things will. And uh, if I gave you any information whatsoever that would help you in your business, I'm delighted. That was my goal, right? And I had a great opportunity of doing this, and I sincerely appreciate everybody's attendance. Uh, time at his daughter's wedding to stand in front of a group of people. He nailed it. He nailed it today.